What's going on, everyone? So the Los Angeles Lakers are undoubtedly going to go star hunting this upcoming offseason. Uh, you know, Donovan Mitchell is the ideal target, in my opinion. I would be over the hill if we were able to get Donovan Mitchell. I think he would be a seamless fit alongside LeBron James and Anthony Davis. He's also a guy that, I mean, he's coming off of, like, what should be an all-NBA or all-defensive um, level season. I mean, he was excellent defensively this season, uh, which is very interesting because, you know, coming out of Louisville, he was a guy that was known as a defensive guy. He was looked at as like, hey, this guy is, you know, is going to come in as a defensive stopper and ended up becoming the opposite, became a, a, a premier scorer, right? If he can find that nice balance, you pair him with Anthony Davis, right? And imagine like a Jared Vanderbilt, right? Like especially, ah, oh, man, that, that would just be a ton of fun. Personally, if I'm being honest, though, I I think it's going to end up being Trey. There's just been so much smoke, and usually where there's smoke, there's fire. And there's just been so much talk. And like, you even have guys like Kendrick Perkins basically saying that Trey Young himself has talked to him and been like, I'm going to Lakers, right? Like, there's, like, video circulating right now of, like, Trey Young hanging out at, a, I think it was, like, a Warriors game or something like that with, like, uh, Rich Paul and stuff. It's just, like... And I get it, clutch connections and all that stuff, but like, you know, it's just this. This kind of feels like a thing that's kind of been in the works for some time. It's been in the works for a while, um, and I just think ultimately they're gonna end up landing Trey. Um, I have my reservations about it. I'm kind of like iffy on it, but we'll we'll talk more about like the specifics of Trey once we kind of get into the off season. The actual news and rumors and stuff come out. We'll kind of break it down from there. But we got a report that basically said that the, like some within the organization of the Lakers are hesitant to go get that third star. Now, many of them do, and it's the Lakers. Again, they're going to go get that third star. If they can realistically get one, they'll get it. It's just what the Lakers have always done. They go big game hunting. They go star chasing, right? Stars are the ones that win you. Um, you know, if they can, it's also not just about right now. Right, like Trey makes sense for the long term, right? Because then you have, you know, even post LeBron, you have Trey Young and you'd have Anthony Davis to kind of used as as like building blocks post LeBron. And then even after, I mean, Trey's like what, 25? So even when Anthony Davis's contract's up, Trey will still be on the right side of 30. So, you know, you could go get another piece to pair with Trey and now you now maybe you're contending still. So like going and landing Trey, like they need that younger star. So I get the allure. I get the idea. I get the reasoning behind wanting to go get Trey on. Right. Cause like you look at all the other top teams in the league, they all got that like 20, 20 something year old. That's just like tearing it up. You go get Trey. He kind of do the same thing. Get it. It's a thought, but LeBron James in that same report is apparently pushing for a third star hard. I like that. He's, I mean, that to me, isn't like really news. Like, He's been doing that for, you know, since the trade deadline, like, and even in in the the past off season, like he he wants that third star, and LeBron wants the third star because of where he's at in his stage of his career, right? Like, if the Lakers go and land a third star, what that does is it allows LeBron to kind of be like the you know the the third guy, quote unquote. He's never gonna be the third guy. He's always gonna be LeBron James, but. During the regular season, he doesn't have to play, or ideally, he doesn't have to play 40 minutes a game, and he doesn't have to, you know, overexert himself. He can kind of play the way that he wants to play, where he can kind of pick and choose his his spots, and, you know, he's going to go get his, you know, his 28 and 8 or whatever, but he doesn't have to be overly aggressive. I also think if he goes and gets that other star, there's not as much of, he doesn't have to now go get 25 seven and seven or whatever, 25, eight and eight right now he could drop to like, you know, say 18 to 20. And it's kind of like, you know, Oh, is LeBron slipping? No, like I, we got a third star. I'm trying to play with it. You know what I mean? It kind of gives him that, like, as he, like, he doesn't, he doesn't have to do as much now, right? He can kind of just get through the season. And then when you get to the playoffs, right, it's like, okay, we're in the playoffs, right? You saw even in this playoff series against Denver, LeBron sharing the basketball, trying to get other guys going, I kind of trying to not have to work too hard if he doesn't need to, right? 
Well, if you add a guy like a Trey and Anthony Davis, like they can be your workhorses during the regular season. They can be the workhorses in, you know, a playoff series. And then LeBron kind of pick and choose. Ah, oh, man, Trey's having a bad game. Let me pick it up here a little bit. You know, Trey's three of nine from the field right now, right? So he's he's probably having a rough shoot night. Let me let me go let me go drop thirty tonight, right? Because he has it in the tank now to go do so, right? So I again, there's a lot of reasoning for LeBron, for the Lakers, for the future, for the organization, like, as to why the Lakers should go get that third star, right? But to me, I just think it ultimately depends. It depends on who the third star is, you know, what other complementary pieces do they put around them, right? If it's like, you know, if it's like, I don't know, like, Trey, LeBron, AD, and then like, you know, Torrey and Prince and you know, Jalen Hood Shafino, like it's probably it's probably not great, right? You're probably in a little bit of trouble, right? But if it's like, you know, if you could, you know, get a tray and then you know, is Maxwell Christie willing and ready to kind of take the next step, right? Can he be a premier three and D guy? Right? Like, can you do something like that? And then, you know, if Jared Vanderbilt can develop some level of three point shooting, right? Okay. Well, even like with Trey, like between Trey LeBron and Anthony Davis, it's like you got enough firepower, right? So like a Max Christie and and Jared Vanderbilt kind of be those those two two way guys for you, even if they're not like elite, but just serviceable enough. Well, now now you're in a good position there. And then can you go get you know like a Kevin Porter Jr. on, on like a, a prove it deal, right? Like you know he he needs to kind of you know revamp his reputation and his image. Right? Lakers is a good place to go do that. Right now you get somebody like that, and then. You know, like you maybe you keep a Christian Wood and Tory and Prince, and they're coming off the bench, right? Like I said, I'm starting alongside Trey and stuff because you're like Trey's a defensive liability. Like LeBron is going to be a defensive liability. You need those complementary pieces. So to me, again, it's just it just depends on how it shapes up. It depends on how it all looks. But if you can if you can make it make sense, then do it. Right, but I get why LeBron wants it. I get why you know some within the Lakers organization doesn't. But I also get why, if the reports are true, that some of in the organization don't want it. I get that too, right? Like, you look at the Lakers, and it's like they were close, right? They're 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 like, you know, if D'Lo shows, if D'Lo and Reeves show up consistently that series, it's probably a different series than the Lakers win or Rui shows up, right? So it's like, man, if we could go get another guy. Right, like let's say let's say Kevin Porter, let's say you do get Kevin Porter Jr. and he comes off the bench, right? And let's say you go get, you know, I don't know, you Valanchunas, right? So now you got like a legit center, you got like a a guy that can be like your Malik Monk level guy off the bench. So now you got another consistent score. You go get a new head coach. It's like you're right there, right? It's like man, if you had like one other guy show up in that Denver series, it's probably a different series. So it's like if you could, if you could go get like maybe say like Kevin Porter Jr. who averaged 19 a game and then you know you get a Valanciunas so now you got a real burly big center that can you know you could throw in in the Oakage matchup and AD and play alongside Anthony Davis put AD at the four and you get the proper coach right like I get that some are probably looking at it and going man we're not that far off right we're like right there go get those pieces that put you over that line. And live with the result. But then on the other hand, it's like, what does LeBron look like next year? Like, LeBron is undoubtedly a top 10 player. So, I mean, the guy's been ridiculous, right? At worst, let's call him a top 12, right? Like, he's been fantastic this year. But the thing is, he can't put it together for 40 minutes a game for whatever. I mean, he was, even in the Denver series, he was spectacular. He did a lot of good. But it's just like, you can clearly see the fatigue, clearly see the issue. So it's like, is LeBron James in year 40, in year, or sorry, in year, um, you know, 22, age 40, is he the guy that's going to be able, if you run it back and just kind of add pieces, like, can he carry the workload enough, right? Or do you know guys improve, right? If Austin Reeves kind of gets back to what he was that, that previous year, not this year, but last year, you know, it, can Rui kind of take strides again? You saw the strides that he took between year one with the Lakers and this year with the Lakers, right? Like, what does he look like as far as those strides go, right? Like, it's just, 
you know, and then again, you go get, again, just using an example, Kevin Porter Jr., right? Sticking with that. It's like, okay, well, now you got that that vacuum scorer off the bench. And then you go get a Valentino. Okay, well, now we got, you know, a legit center. Or even if it's not Valentino, let's say it's Andre Drummond, right? Well, now, okay, now you got that legit rebounding center that can fill in and, and play alongside Anthony Davis, back up Anthony Davis, right? Like, there's, there's logic there, but... Anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Past question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Do uh, do you think the Lakers should go get that third star? Do you think, like, no? Like, just go kind of upgrade around the edges. Uh, just get a new coach and we'll be good. I have a feeling whatever your thoughts are. Love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.